that happened and the doctors basically were like you're gonna die but then i didn't die and they were like really confused because they were like literally how are you not dead and i was just like wondering a lot like why why am i alive like all signs pointed toward i was gonna die and i just like did not know why i was alive what i was supposed to be doing because i felt like i was just being a robot hey what's up you guys it's ari welcome back to my channel or if you are new hello welcome to my channel my name is Ari. I make videos about the life of an activist. I make videos about anorexia recovery. And I make videos just like every other YouTuber, hauls, challenges, all of that jazz. Today's video is a little bit... Not that much different, actually, because I've been making a lot of activism videos lately, but it's a little bit different. Um, I'm going to do the top five best things about being an activist. To be completely honest, um, this idea originated from the idea of top five worst things about being an activist, which I'm still going to do because there's hard things about being an activist, but I thought it would be better if I did the positives first before I did the negatives because I truly love do being an activist and doing activism and even though it's really hard at times and there's really frustrating things that I do want to make a video about, it's like, it's changed my life and it's saved my life and I love it. So I wanted to make the positive video first. If you've never seen one of my videos before, um, I'm a climate activist, environmental activist from Utah, and so that's what I've been making a lot of content about recently, because that's what you guys have been asking me to make content about. Without further ado, I am going to just jump right into the video with number one. First thing, also these are in no particular order, but number one is relationships. So before I like got involved with activism, people would always, it was when I was still going to school, um, no, I didn't drop out. I finished school early. <laughs> um, people are always like, oh, you dropped out. No, I didn't drop out. I finished early when I was still in school. People would always, um, ask if I had friends at school, like when family friends and stuff would come over and I would say no. And they were always like, oh no, like, I'm sure, I'm sure you have so many friends. I'm sure everyone wants to be friends with you. And I was like, no, like they genuinely don't. And that doesn't bother me. Like I, I wasn't looking for friends. I didn't care. I, I went to school because I had to. And then I obviously, I was doing a school strike on Fridays, which if I'm being completely honest, um, when I was at school, I had a 4.0, but I'm a junior this year. I'm supposed to be a junior and I haven't finished a school year since seventh grade because my mental health, garbage. Um, and so the only reason that I actually went to school every day, except for on Fridays, was because I knew that I had to go to strike on Friday and that was important enough to me that... I was like, okay, I'm not gonna, if I have bad attendance or if my grades slip, I can't strike on Friday and that was my main priority. So that's actually why I went to school. But um, as I was saying, when I was, when I went to school, I was going because I legally had to be there and because I had to do it. Not because I wanted to, not because I wanted to make friends, not because I wanted to hang out. I went there, did the work and left. Um, and so it didn't bother me. I didn't feel lonely when I was at school. Um, and I didn't really think that I needed friends. And I still think, I mean, I have friends. I didn't think I needed more friends. And I still don't think that the relationships I've had from activism are like necessary. Like I couldn't live without them. But it is so amazing the relationships I've been able to build both online and in real life around activism. And they may not be like necessary to my life, but they just add so much. Um, for example, like Fridays for Future USA, I've been able to connect with kids, like mostly girls, from all over America that are climate activists that have the same interests as me, the same, like, they know the same stuff as me about climate change and they're passionate and we just have like that stuff in common. I even have a friend who's also in recovery and so it's really interesting that we're both climate activists that are in recovery and like there's a lot to bond over that. Whereas just going to school and stuff, like I never met anybody with so much in common that I bothered to like really want to be friends with them. And so like the relationships have just been amazing and even the relationships in real life, like, I, for the first couple months, like, a good couple months that I started activism, I really hated the human part of it. Like, I had to talk to people, I had to be nice to people and be like, hi, I'm Ari, and introduce myself, and everyone was like, oh, give me your email, let's have a phone call, and I was like, no, 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 no. That's actually one thing I didn't put on this that I wanted to. Social skills. 10 out of 10. Like, my social skills grew so much from, like, I had a psychiatrist told me I had Asperger's, which I actually don't doubt still that I have Asperger's, even though, like, my parents said that I don't, but the psychiatrist said that I did. Anyways, um, I fit the criteria, and my social skills were so bad, like, kind of like how I said when I was at school, not focused on talking to other people. I would go through the whole day and not open my mouth one time. 
to talk. Didn't talk in class, didn't talk to people, like just silent the whole day. And that didn't bother me. You can see how that's a little weird and like maybe concerning. And so I did not like that everyone wanted to talk to me and have phone calls, but I can have a phone call now. Like I can just, I had two calls this morning, like important, like not business, but like climate business calls. And I just had a phone call, good phone call, chill, like not afraid to talk on the phone anymore. So that's another plus that I forgot to put in here. But yeah, just the relationships and the relationships in real life, once I got over that hurdle of being like uncomfortable with it, I have like amazing friends that I'm just so tight with that I've met through striking and through climate events. Um, and not only is it friends, but it's also just like contacts. And I do consider them my friends, but like adults that have, that are part of like larger organizations. And now I have those, like I have relationships with them. So I have like contacts for events and speaking opportunities and just, a lot of stuff and it's really cool number two on the list is education so a lot of people are like it's so frustrating they're like you have to go to school and get your education and I'm like listen to me once you like hit middle school like when you're done with middle school everything you learn in high school not useful some of the history is useful in Utah you're required to take financial literacy um, they just made that thing which is useful and I think you can take government if you want to, and that's useful. But like, once you're done with middle school math, you're just learning like abstract concepts in math with a, I know, it teaches you how to reason, it teaches, I'm aware, okay? I know. But I always said, and I've heard this from like, I think every kid, even like this nine year old that comes, every kid that comes to strike says, I learned so much more at strike than I learned at school. Um, and it's really true. At school, like, yeah, I can memorize a formula and then plug numbers into it and then spit it out on a test and then get a good grade. Or, oh yeah, I can remember what a hyperbole is and then write a hyperbole and then get a good grade. Like, I can memorize things and put it onto a paper and get a good grade. But at Strike, you don't just learn about the climate. You learn about the climate and climate science and climate justice. And you learn about the government and how the government works and what certain political things mean and how things interwork with each other. You learn interpersonal skills, how to remember people's names, how to say hi to people, how to reach out to people, how to react to rude people. You just, and you learn about yourself and you learn about empathy and you learn about activism, you learn about history and you just learn about like so many things at Strike. And it's not just at Strike. Like I was so uneducated when I got into activism. I was like the world's ending right now. The world's like low key, like slowly ending, but I mean, I guess the world's always been like getting closer to the point of ending, but like it's accelerating. That didn't make sense. Sorry. But like now I feel like I'm, I actually feel like I'm not educated at all, but I know that I'm a lot more educated than when I started and a lot more educated than like a lot of other people who aren't like super into this because I have hundreds, actually thousands of pages of scientific studies and research and like just articles and, and like books and it's so interesting i don't know if that made sense but just through activism not only at strike but also like online and in other ways i have learned so much not only about the climate but about like how the government works how the world works like how money works i've learned oh i've learned how to use public transit because originally um I started getting into like Greta and I thought it was really cool so I wanted to do a school strike and Greta when she told her parents she was going to do a school strike they were like no you're not and she was like yes I am and she did it anyway. So then when I told my parents I was going to go do a school strike and they said no you're not I was like yes I am and I did it anyway. Um, and they were like well we're not going to take you and I was like fine I'll take the train. So now I know how to um, use a train which is fun. They're more supportive now but. <laughs> On to number three. This is kind of two things. I wrote the like title thing that I put for it was purpose, but also like mental health. So like purpose slash mental health. Um, before activism guys, oh my gosh, I was struggling. I was struggling during activism too. If you have been following me, you know I was in the hospital for three months, so vibes. But I was struggling so bad, just like, uh, I was a sophomore and I just remember it was like, wake up, go to school, go to work, get home, sleep. Wake up, go to school, go to work, get home, sleep. And I was terrified. I was like, I just have to keep doing this for two more years. And then I'm gonna have to move out, wake up, go to work, get home, sleep, wake up, go to, 
and like I was just terrified of living this life like I watched my parents I watched my friends parents I watch like my friends that have moved out like you just live this life like wake up you eat because you need to eat you go to work to, because you need money to live you get home you eat because you need to eat you maybe like watch Netflix and then you sleep and you wake up and you do it all over again and I was just terrified that I was gonna be trapped in that and I also was like literally what's the point of life like why am I here like what am I doing like I just didn't understand and I had this is like a little bit dark but like two three years ago I had like a suicide attempt which I don't want to like put on the internet even though I just did but like that happened and the doctors basically were like you're gonna die but then I didn't die and they were like really confused because they were like literally how are you not dead and I was just like wondering a lot like why why am I alive like all signs pointed toward I was gonna die and I just like did not know why I was alive what I was supposed to be doing because I felt like I was just being a robot just like slaving to society and doing what they said I had to do and it was so terrible but once I started with activism like I had a purpose and like kind of like how I was saying I went to school so that I could not go to school on Friday it was like I had a reason to be doing things I had a reason like you know what yeah I need to go to work and have my job and work hard and be a good employee because I need money to pay for my train ticket so that I can go down to Salt Lake to strike. Like, I need to go to school so that my school and my parents will let me keep striking on Fridays and I can prove that I'm good and that I can strike on Fridays. And so it just like, it drove everything in my life. It was like, I need to do my chores so that my parents will let me out of the house to go to strike. I need to, you, you know, like I had a reason to be doing everything and it just, it had that purpose. And then the part that I said about mental health, um, and I'm gonna cover mental health in like kind of a negative way in the um, like worst things about activism video. But let me tell you, I will explain in that video too, but the, the positives outweigh the negatives a million percent with mental health. I mean, and there's an article that's going around right now of Greta um, Thunberg's mom talking about how she was like depressed and anorexic before activism. And then she started doing activism and she got better and that's, um, obviously anorexic went to the hospital so that was a thing but like I think it goes with that purpose is that it helps my mental health so much and I think being social with people and um, is good for my mental health I think having something to do instead of just like sitting on my butt all day having that purpose and also just like when I was in the hospital trying to get out of the hospital and going through refeeding which I'm gonna make a video on which is literally the worst experience of my life Maybe not the worst. There's some trauma that's probably worse, but it was terrible. And I just like, and then I got home and I relapsed and I could not figure out what my motivation was. Like, why am I doing this? Why am I trying to recover? Because I had like nothing that I could, like no motivation. And that motivation ended up being activism. That's why I'm still trying to recover and I'm still in treatment and I haven't given up yet and I haven't just relapsed and said, screw it. I know I'm still working hard even when I have bad days because like I want to live and I want to have a functioning body for activism. Number four is it's a hobby. I know that I've seen a lot of tweets talking about like activism isn't fun like it's a, it's terrible and I'm like okay I'm sorry that you hate activism but I really like activism like it's a hobby to me. Like, it's obviously much more than a hobby. Like it's a moral duty almost. Like I take it upon myself and it's like a full-time job at the same time, but I don't get paid. I wish I got paid. I do enjoy it and it is a hobby and kind of like how I was saying, um, like it takes up my time and gets me out of the house. I didn't have a hobby before. I didn't do anything. I had lots of hobbies I wanted. Like wanted to be a better singer, wanted to be a better dancer, wanted to skateboard better. I had a YouTube, but it's hard to do YouTube when you're in a bad mental spot. and. Like activism has just got me up and out of the house. It's not just strikes, it's going to events. It's having phone calls about things and meetings and interviews and like, I just think it's fun. And I run all the social media for Fires for Future Utah and I just love it. I love creating the captions. I love editing the pictures. I love planning when I'm gonna post, how I'm gonna post, who I tag, what the pictures look like, how the layout looks like and just like, the bio and I run the website I love managing the website that I'm um, I actually made the website which was really fun I started making websites when I was like 10 <laughs> um, because my dad was a programmer and so like yes it's hard work and it's serious but it's also fun and I kind of consider it like a hobby 
because I put the time most people put into like hobbies, like going to dance class or like playing basketball. I put that time into activism and I didn't have a hobby before except for YouTube. <laughs> Number five, I don't care if you're mad about this one, is a platform. I have a platform. Do I have a thousand followers on any of my social media? No. <laughs> I have like 500. But listen, I'm not gonna say everyone, but most people want, like they like fame, they like attention, they like, they like, they like having followers, they like being famous, and I'm by no means famous at all. But it is really fun sometimes when I feel like I'm famous for a minute. Like I got to go be interviewed on the radio um, and we took up two slots on the radio and they interviewed us. That was cool. Like I was, I was at a radio like station in like a little studio with a little microphone and like I was interviewing live on the, on the radio. Like that's awesome, that's fun. Like I'm obviously not doing this to be famous or anything but it's fun to be treated like you're famous for like once every couple months. <laughs> and when I get to be interviewed to be on TV at a big event, that's awesome. Like I'm on TV, that's awesome. When like a huge account, like when Greta Thunberg followed me, which I know doesn't matter, but it mattered to me because that's really, really cool because she is famous. Whether you like it or not, she's famous. And that was really cool that she followed me. Thank you, Grace, for um, helping that happen. One of the many Graces. Fun fact, we have a group chat on Twitter called The Grace Squad, and it's all the climate activists around the world that have the word Grace in their name because there's a lot of us. Anyways, no, that's not what we're talking about. So I'm obviously not like trying to get famous with activism or anything, but I'm not gonna lie. Like I had like 200 followers on Instagram when I was just like doing YouTube. Now I have like almost 600. That's great. I like having followers. Like that's cool. Once I break a thousand followers, I'm going to be happy about that. I'm not going to lie. My YouTube channel has been growing since I've done activism. I love it when people share my videos on Twitter, like my activism videos. It's awesome. It's fun. And I get to feel like I'm special and famous for a second. I get to get attention for a second. And I think a lot of activists like that. And they're not, they might try to like brush it off, but we're like, you shouldn't deny that you like having attention. It doesn't make you attention seeking, it makes you human. Like, if you're excited because you are interviewed for the newspaper, send me a picture of you on the front page of the newspaper. That's amazing, I'm so happy for you. Like, if you got to be in a short film about activists, share that. I will share the hell out of that on my Instagram, on my Twitter, because that's awesome for you, because you deserve that attention. I'm just going on a rant now, but I, I love it. I love activism. And sometimes it feels like I don't get enough attention for how hard I work, but then it pays off when I get to do epic things, like speak at big events or be interviewed for the radio. So that was number five. That is all that I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And I just wanna say that I've had my channel for like almost two years now, which is crazy. Um, why do I only have like 400 subscribers? That's really sad, but it's almost been two years. And um, I watched through some of my old videos and I was so uncomfortable on camera and you can tell when you watch them, but I was watching them and I remember how I felt while I was filming those videos. Like I remember the feeling of like just being uncomfortable, being self-conscious, being unsure of myself. Like I remember editing, I would say something and then I would just like go like this and I would just look at the ground and be like overthinking and then I would get up and like say the next thing and then I would be like, was that right? And fixing my hair and being like, oh my gosh, I look stupid. But like just filming this video and filming my videos lately, even when I'm filming in public, which is so awkward when I film on my phone and on my camera, to be honest, it's just awkward. But like, I've just been so comfortable and I think that's a lot because of you guys because I, I know that a lot of my subscribers have come because of activism and like you guys are the sweetest and you leave the nicest comments even when there's like not that many comments they're all so sweet and nice which is a great contrast from the like old trolls I get to, used to get on my channel and just making like this video for you guys I don't know if it's because I'm in a good mood or what but like this just felt so good and I felt so like it just felt natural and it just it was flowing out of me as you can tell by why this is like I have 20 minutes of footage so far but I just wanted to say thank you to you guys because I feel like my 
mindset and my like vibe with YouTube has completely changed from when I started my channel and I just feel so much more comfortable and like I, it's just such a like loving place for me right now even when I get disliked on my videos and then I get upset it's still a really loving place and just I feel like knowing that you guys are my viewers and like the people that are watching my videos are so sweet even when you don't comment like I just get your vibe um and I just like it makes it easier and it makes me love YouTube it makes me love filming this video like I'm just smiling like why am I just smiling I don't know why I'm smiling but anyways I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching and for subscribing and when you like the videos that means like so much to me I love like I don't say like I love getting likes but like I've got a lot of dislikes in the past and I have one video that's like 90% dislikes um I took it down so don't go looking for it but like that really hurt my heart because I work so hard on my videos like they take a couple days between like getting ready for it prepping for it setting things up filming and then editing and then finishing and then uploading it and then adding the things and like it takes a long time and so when I get dislikes it like hurts my heart but you guys have been liking my videos and that means a lot to me I feel like I'm being so cheesy so I'm just gonna stop it right there thank you so much for watching if you want to see more stuff about activism or if you're interested in seeing stuff about mental health eating disorder like recovery stuff or just random videos if you like my hair subscribe I don't know what that's to do with anything actually I do have a hair dye video I have a hair playlist it's pretty bad I have a hair dye video that's gone up recently if you want to go watch that it'll be on my channel you can just go find it I'm not gonna link it uh, but for real subscribe if you want to I'm trying to make it to 600 this year so that hopefully next year I can get monetized when I reach 1000 so it would mean a lot if you did want to subscribe um, turn the notification bell on if you want to if you don't want to that's fine because some people say it's better for the algorithm if it's off but if you want it on, then turn it on, because that's good too. And of course, like the video if you liked the video. And if you didn't like the video, feel free to click away and watch a video that you liked. I love you guys so much. I'll see you on the streets. Peace out. I wanna go somewhere I love, feeling the pain.